As you know, we can iterate over arrays, right? For example, we can use the for each loop to iterate over this array and print its keys and values. If we try this out in terminal and run the code, sure enough, everything works. We can also iterate over objects in PHP using for each loop, and by default, it will iterate over all the visible or accessible properties of the object. Let's test this out. I have an invoice class right here that has two public properties. One is a generated ID property, and the other one is the promoted amount property which gets accepted in the constructor let's replace an array here with an object of an invoice class so we can do new app invoice and pass in some amount let's try to run this code now and as you can see we are getting the names and values of the public property so we're getting the id amount and the actual id and amount values if we change the visibility of the property to protected or to private and we run the code again then it no longer works now iterating over objects this way is not that useful and also it is not that performant that being said though what if we could iterate over objects in a specific way maybe iterate over some array property that is within this object or have a way to define how we want this object to be iterated over that sounds more interesting and is quite possible in PHP and we actually saw an example of it in the last lesson when we talked about date period class we were able to iterate over date period object right and we were getting back each individual date if we open the class definition of the date period class we see that it implements the traversable interface and the traversable interface is just PHP's internal interface that is just a base interface that lets classes be traversable using for each loop if we look at its definition we see that it's just an empty interface without any methods so it's just a base interface that two other interfaces called iterator aggregate and iterator extend so we can use iterator or iterator aggregate to define how objects of classes should be iterated let's say that we wanted to have a class to represent a list of invoice objects and maybe have some methods that work on those objects and so on let's create that class we can call it invoice list or invoice collection which may sound familiar to you if you've used framework like laravel for example so let's change it to invoice collection the invoice collection class would accept list of invoices in the constructor so we can pass in an array and create few invoice objects here so we can create an invoice with amount 15 we can create an invoice with amount 25 and let's create one one more with amount 50 let's get rid of this and let's create this class within the app namespace let's change the argument name to invoices and let's promote this so that we have a property called invoices now let's try to loop over this collection as is so I'll go back to the index.php and we can simply try to loop over invoice collection and then let's echo out invoice ID and invoice amount let's try to run the code and we're getting warnings that we're trying to access the property ID and amount on an array and this makes sense right because when we iterate over objects like this it's trying to iterate over all the visible properties and the invoice collection only has a single property which is called invoices so if we wire dump invoice here and run the code we see that it's just an array of invoices so this is not what we're trying to do instead what we want to do is that when we iterate over a collection like this we want to iterate over the invoices property that is within the invoice collection class so basically we want to run that loop over this property here we can do that by either implementing iterator interface or iterator aggregate interface and we're going to cover both but let's start with the iterator interface first so we need to implement the iterator interface and we need to implement all the methods that are provided within that interface and that interface has five methods that we need to provide the implementation for it has current next key valid and rewind so let's review these methods and fill them in the first method which is current supposed to return the current element or the current invoice from the invoice list so we can simply use the current function and pass in the invoices array to it and it should work so let's echo out the method name using the magic constant and let's move on next let's fill in the next method and this method should bring the internal pointer to the next element and we can use the php's function called next to do exactly that so we can return next and then pass in the invoices array and then we can also copy this echo statement from here into here the next method that we need to fill in is the key method and it should simply return the key of the current element of an array and we can use php's function key for this and pass in the invoices array and let's add the echo statement here as well 
well and the next method we need to fill in is valid it basically needs to check if the current position is valid if this method returns false then the for each loop will stop so there are a few ways you could check the valid here but we could simply use the current function to get the current element of the array and if it returns false then it is no longer valid so we can do something like this return current this invoices does not equal to false and the last method we need to implement is the rewind method which gets called at the beginning of the for each loop it needs to reset the array pointer back to the beginning so we can use php's reset function to reset the array so we can pass in these invoices to it and rewind actually does not return anything and also the method next does not return anything so we don't need to return anything from here and let's add the echo statements to the valid and to rewind and let's try to run this code let's open the terminal run the code and we're getting this error because i forgot to change the property visibility to public because we set it to protected when i was demonstrating it so let's change it to public for now let's clear this out run it again and sure enough everything works as you can see first it calls the rewind method then it calls the valid method and then it calls the current method the current method returns the current object which is the first invoice object which is this and then we are simply echoing out the id of that object which is this and then the amount of that object which is 15. then it calls the next method to advance the pointer to the next element calls the valid method to check if it's valid and then calls the current again to get the current element and it returns the next invoice which is this right here with the amount 25 and we see that right here and it repeats that as many times as it needs until the valid method returns false so as you can see on the last one after printing 50 it calls the next method to advance the pointer to the next element and because the next element does not exist it returns false and the valid returns false and therefore the loop stops so as you can see we have implemented a custom iterator a custom invoice collection where we are able to iterate our invoice collection using the for each loop and access those invoice objects now of course we would also need to build some additional methods to the invoice collection to make it more useful such as is empty count sorting and so on note that we could also use an index or a position property here instead of using php's built-in functions so instead of using current next key and reset we could simply use a pointer property so we could create something like private int pointer or maybe index or call it whatever you need to we can call it key for example and then we could replace this simply by using that pointer so we could return these invoices this key and for the next we would simply need to increment key and for the key we could simply return the key and for valid we could use the eset function to check if the key is valid or not and for rewind we could set the key back to zero now if we clear this out and run the code again everything is still working we're getting the first invoice the second invoice and third invoice now if you're iterating over simple arrays like this then implementing iterator might be overkill php has a bunch of built-in iterators that you could use instead if you open the spl iterators documentation we see a bunch of built-in iterators right here we have the array iterator we have the file system iterator we have directory iterator recursive directory iterator and so on array iterator is the one that we're going to use for our case so we could essentially use array iterator to replace all of this code right here and the way we can use that is by using iterator aggregate if we open up the documentation for the iterator aggregate interface we see that it has a single method called get iterator which should return the iterator or an instance of a traversable interface so we could simply replace the iterator interface here with the iterator aggregate and get rid of all these methods from here and simply provide implementation for a single method called get iterator and now we can use one of the built-in spl iterators or we could use our own custom iterator that we can abstract it away into a different class and use that instead but spl iterators are enough for the most cases so we're going to use the array iterator so we're going to create a new object of that and pass in the invoices as the argument and let's get rid of this key from here let's open up the terminal clear this out run the code and as you can see everything is still working so basically if you're working with simple arrays and need the ability to iterate over your objects that contain the array property iterate aggregate might be better since you only need to implement a single method but if you need more control and you're not iterating over simple arrays then you probably need iterator interface instead for example going back to the date period class if you had a similar class with some custom logic in it and wanted it to be iterable you would probably want to implement that iterate 
evaluator interface and then provide the proper implementations for those methods. Now what if we had another collection class, maybe a customer collection or a payment profile collection or something else? We would be duplicating this part of code here, right? To avoid that, we could simply extract this code out of here into a base collection class. So we could simply extend the collection class here and let's create that class and we can move this out of here and into the collection class and we could move the implements from here into the collection class as well. And we could provide some constructor here and call these items instead of invoices. And let's make this private and instead of using invoices, we'll use items here. And in here we can get rid of the constructor because we no longer Longer needed and let's run the code and everything still works before we wrap up this video let's talk about type hinting what if we had a function or a method that expected an argument that could either be an array or a collection or any type that can be iterated over for example let's say that we have a function called foo here and we're expecting some kind of iterable argument and then we're iterating over that argument now how can we type hint this if we type hint it as array then if we're passing a collection it's going to fail if we type hint it as collection and we pass in an array it's going Going to fail thanks to php8 we could actually solve that by using union types and we could type hint both of this and it will work but then what if you had other types of iterators that are not collections and not arrays you would have to kind of chain these and create a bunch of types here which might not be ideal php 7.1 introduced a new pseudo type called iterable which you can use to type hint all iterable types so instead of doing something like this or using doc blocks or something like that you could simply type hint it as iterable so if we call foo here and passing invoice collection, this is going to work. If we call foo and pass in some array, it's going to work and so on. And let's simply print the index here so that we can see that loop is working. Let's run the code. And sure enough, it prints 012. Let's pass in some array elements here and it's going to print 012 and 012 again because we're iterating over both. If we passed in something that's not iterable, something like a scalar value, for example, this is going to throw an error. This is it for this video. The main advantage of iterators in general is that it allows lazy loading and has reduced memory usage. And we'll get to that later in the course once we get to something called generators topic with the yield keyword. Thank you so much for watching. Please hit like and subscribe if you enjoyed it and I'll see you next time.